Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. How many of you are so excited to be in church this morning? How many people love Nigeria? You are not planning to run to Canada. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, choir. <laughs> uh, ask your neighbor, are you planning to run away? <laughs> Somebody said, I'm actually planning to. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. I've told you times without number, travel only where you are being led. But the problem is that many people are being led now. <laughs> Nigeria is just about to change. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Other nations will go through their own later. This is the darkest moment of our nation. And what will follow the darkest moment has to be the day. So it's not going to be like this forever. The travail has been on for years. And the last maybe eight to six years, they've been serious, chaotic, what the Bible calls gross darkness. Serious hunger. Well, I don't belong to any political party, so I'm, I'm just talking about the reality out there. Insecurity. Dollar to Naira. <laughs> the gap is getting wider, like our sins separated from east to west. And so many things happening. Many cannot travel on the road to many places in Nigeria anymore. Once you go past southwest, uh, you might need to pray. I served in NNPC Kaduna. I used to drive Kaduna Abuja. I used to go and see my brother was in Abuja almost every two weeks for one year on that road. I learned that about the most dangerous road now. You can pass through the road. You might just be kidnapped. And Bantry Tree looks like the most lucrative business now. It should not be a cause to be studied in school. But in the midst of all, the glory of the Lord will rise. This nation, I have no shadow of doubt, is loved by God. And because God loves Nigeria, He will not forsake Nigeria. The wicked will go down and the righteous will rise. And if you look through the lenses of faith, at times, you will see that actually the prayers of God's people, they are working. Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. Our prayer is that come 2023, there is only one point that God will prove. Power belongs to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Those who think they can strategize, those who think they can offer sacrifice, those who turn into diabolical stuff, and those who hate the nation will go down. Amen. And the righteous will stand. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. But one of the best ways of changing a nation is that individuals in that nation should begin to do what God has called them to do. If there are enough people doing that, after a while, light will saturate everywhere and darkness will disappear. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This morning, let's turn our Bibles to Judges chapter 6. And I want to read verse 12. Oh, we are going to read, actually, um, let's start from 10. Or oh, let's start from 11. Judges 6, 11. And there came an angel of the Lord, and sat under an oak which was in Ophrah, and that pertained to Joash, the Abesrites. And his son Gideon threshed with by white praise to hide it from the Midianites. Verse 12. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. What a salutation. Verse 13. <laughs> and Gideon said to him, Oh my Lord, 
if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befalling us? Where be all these miracles which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him. He was talking and the Lord was looking at him. He said, wow, you made a remarkable point. <laughs> and said, go in this thy might and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of Midianite have I not sent thee. Verse 15. And he said unto him, O oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I'm the least in my father's house. Verse 16. And the Lord said to him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianite as one man. Praise the Lord. Thank God for his word this morning. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You can have your seat. God bless you. What a powerful story. But before we go to that, last week's second service, I began to speak about interpretation. So, first service, I spoke about miracle in your desert. And then I spoke that second service that it is connected to interpretation. So Daniel chapter 5, let's read again from verse 10. What the queen said about Daniel. So we spoke about Joseph last week who said interpretation belongs to God. Now the queen by the reason of the words of the king and his lord came to the banquet house and the queen spake and said, O king, live forever. Let not thy thought trouble thee nor let thy countenance be changed. Next verse. There is a man in your kingdom, in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. In the days of thy father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods was found in him. Whom the king Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the king I say thy father, made master of magicians, astrologers, and soothsayers. Ah. For as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding. What is the next word there? Ah. I hate a quiet church. What's the next word there? Better. Can we say it one more time? One more time. What's the next word? What's the next one? They were found in what? In who? Hallelujah. But let me pick it from the preceding verse. Go just step backward. One. Now the Bible says, I say, the last part, Thy father made master of magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. The mystery behind magic, why people seek soothsayers, why people love those who say they sing to the spirit, why people, even when they get born again, they want somebody to prophesy to them, they want somebody to show them because there is this affinity for man and the unknown. But what the soul of man is actually seeking for is interpretation to the matters of their life. Last week, when we read about Joseph and the two prisoners that dreamt, second service, so many of you were here for first service, second service, and I was explaining that one was restored back and one was beheaded and the Bible says, Every man according to the interpretation of their dream. We read that last week. The one that died did not die because of the dream. The one that was restored was not restored because of the dream. They were restored and one died because of the interpretation. 
It is not about what is happening to you in life. It is not about what is going on. It's about the meaning, the interpretation of what is going on. So Joseph said, you, this is the meaning of your dream. In three days will be restored. And that was exactly what happened. Now I won last week. You have to be careful who interprets the matters of your life. Because the key is an interpretation. Now, as soon as Daniel possessed ability to interpret dreams, he rose as master of my, what a title. He was not a magician. He was a Jew. He was not an astrologer. But you see, the end point of astrology, the end point of magic, the end point of oracles and soothsaying is that men might understand the themes of their life. Why do people guess into crystal ball? And when people get born again and they are not taught the word of God, second service, I'm going to talk about how, what to do about the receiver that is inside you. Though if you are for first service, as you go home or you are to watch second service, many of you have never had contact with your heart before. Your mind is so loud that you have never heard your heart. That's what I want to talk about, second service. And we are going to check some things in the Bible. But let's start this way right now. This is why it is dangerous to worship your needs and to use too much of your external eyes. I broke my brother. If that is what worries you day and night, you will never hear your heart speak once. Yet eternity is written in the heart of men. Hallelujah. I'm going to show you second service. Just like what we are going to get from Gideon now. You see, there is nothing, there is hardly anything that God is going to do in your life that your heart has not captured already. When I say, I'm not talking about your mind. Your mind be anders up and down, and that is the problem. There is a door between your mind and your spirit until your mind gets quiet and shut up for a, pro a, a period of time. It becomes impossible to hear. The door will never open. And guess what? This works for both Christians and non-believers. Because actually God communicates his plan to everybody. Yes. And I may be second service, I'll begin to establish the fact that you might not see a vision or a dream. If you're already touched and you've not seen any vision in your life, probably you might not. It's not necessary. Whether God drops something in your heart in a strong way or an angel appears to you to tell you the same thing, it is the same thing. Means of communicating can be, your mother can call you or she can appear to talk to you physically. Whatever she's saying is the same thing. See, I hear. Because there are many people ignoring important things that the Lord is communicating with them because you've heard somebody who shared an experience with Jesus, somebody who shared an experience with an angel, and you are waiting that you are going to become serious about an aspect of your life when an angel shows up and he tells you. You are wasting time. Are you with me? Uh, this is an issue with the body of Christ. Once I people talk about my eyes were open, I saw a vision. Some just accept defeat. Because when they slept, they were snoring. And when this one slept, he told me he had several dreams. Ah, oh, you are like, oh God, I am not spiritual. So every other thing God has told you, you are abandoning them. There is something that stays in your heart about what you should do. But because no angel, no voice, no audible voice, then you neglect them. Oh. Are you with me? Yes, sir. So Gideon, <laughs> man, oh, I, I can't get away from Daniel, master or magician. Why? He possessed a gift called interpreting of dreams. So when he woke up to Nebuchadnezzar and he said, oh king, this is your dream and this is the meaning. The king fell down and worshipped him. Nigeria needs interpreters. Interpreters we always have reward. When I talked about multiplication last week, see, the only way to have a result, a reward that is sudden and bigger than yourself is not in any poses scheme. Keep losing your money to somebody that tells you you put 100,000 and you make 600,000. Um, let me not go that way today. You know, sometimes I just imagine how people get deceived. So you put your money, the first time you can make money to encourage you. Because they know you are wise. So the first one, you have 2 million in your account, you put 200,000. 
Then you make 600. Then you go and carry the old 2 million. Zoom. I told the guy that spoke to me, I said, you are not, I said, even me, I go use Nigeria myself. When you make money once, you don't go there again. You wait for a long time. I said, covetousness. A lady told me, I think the uncle used to visit native doctors to give him power to entice people, marketing and the rest, so that they would drop their money and do something. And native doctor told him that it will never work with a disciplined person. He said this charm only works. He said that is with all charms. That there must be an iota of covetousness. Greed, desire to make money suddenly. Every deception is built on the fact that it will only affect people. There must be something in you craving for a sudden making of money for the thing to make sense to you. Because a disciplined man that is saving and building grand level will say, I'm not interested. He knows that you can buy property, rent, and make a lot of money, but this one that you drop this and it will multiply, is not interested. But when you're there, it's a, a man's day and night will be rocking your head on the bed on how to make money. I just want money. You look at your account, 72,000. And then you want 7 million. And then you are thinking, just as the thoughts are getting very strong, a friend walks in and he tells you, there is a place that you see, is working in America. It's a chain of something. You just draw 50 and you have 500,000. It will catch you. The rest of people are looking at me, they've been caught. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. See, there is no shortcut to success. Shortcuts, they cut life short. Are you with me? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Glory to God. <laughs> <laughs> Interpret. So when Daniel, told, the king fell down, and the nation needs people like this, is the only way. The reward in this regard is unlimited. Because both kings and slaves all have dreams. There is a level, there's no level a man gets to that there is, that it won't be without a dream that he has no interpretation to, except only those who have met the master himself. So let's go to Gideon. So the angel appeared and he said, mighty man of valor. <laughs> and Gideon was wondering, sorry, did he just call me mighty man? And then Gideon began to protest. Inside the heart of Gideon, there was a matter where he needed interpretation. He was the youngest son of his father. Every day he was going around and he will look at Israel and he will think about miracles of the past. Rest he parted. But here we are, the Midianites sit over us. What is going on? Other Israelites were not thinking like that. There are things playing in your heart. They are playing in your heart because it is a communication between your heart and God. You will think others are thinking that way. And I'm going to say this later, but not for today. Maybe we get to this point next week in taking steps. Never assume that whatever is revealed to you by God, others will understand and comply. It doesn't work like that. You are the one seeing what you are seeing. It takes time and resort to convince people. Even when Moses tried to deliver his soul, one of them told that, who made you a judge over us? But after a while, the same guy, they were almost worshipping him. But at the beginning of your trying to advance, no matter how clear the picture is in your heart, never make a mistake of thinking that others will understand what you are saying because visions are personal. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So there is something going on between your heart and God. As you are seated, everybody watching me, that's why we get the second time on how to really keep quiet and know what is really in your heart. So Gideon never discussed this with anybody, but other people were okay. He was, if you start from verse 1, from the beginning, he was pressing vine and he was hiding it, maybe from verse 10, from the Midianites. They saw a man very hardworking, carrying wine, making things up, maybe a farmer, but every day as he was going to work, there was a question in his heart. Excuse me, what is going on? If God is as powerful as he is, if what our forefathers told us about God, if they are true, why am I in this state? 
Why are the Midianites oppressing us? Gideon was not thinking about himself. His concern was for his nation. Why are we living like slaves? What is going on? And everyone saw it because they dropped the idea there. The picture stayed. But then, like I started second service last week, Gideon couldn't do anything about it until there was an interpreter. Who will send an interpreter to you? That's what I want to get to second service. Actually, you are the interpreter. Or you have ability to receive interpretation. So this marriage is upside down. So this home, so this one, what is it about this child that we have given back to? Ah. There is a little child, I don't know in which country. He is about number one guy in composing classical music, like Handel and the rest. He was born as an imbecile. Couldn't move, couldn't do anything. And the two brothers also, they were okay. So the parents, no school, not, they were just keeping him at home. And then the brothers, the two brothers, a teacher was coming to teach them piano lesson one day. And one day during the lesson, maybe the father came in, and they, so they, they left the two keyboards, the two pianos, and went to see their father, and they were talking. And the teacher was there also. All of a sudden, they were hearing a sound coming from the piano. The guy was playing what the teacher was trying to teach them. First of all, they said he started by playing rubbish. So the father told the that he's, he's the, the imbecile child. That he didn't say that. He just said, it's my child. I don't worry. Don't worry. Let him enjoy himself. After all, he doesn't go. He doesn't. He was playing rubbish. But after some minutes, he started playing some chords. After some more minutes, he started playing what the teachers, every time the teacher was teaching the two, and they left him in the room, these things were being coded in his heart. Then they noticed that he was not just playing ordinary, so he was playing classical music. Then the teacher went to get old songs and them, and the teacher will play. Now, this boy can't talk. I don't think I can even see. The teacher will play the CD, uh, the the old, all those that I used to put, I don't know what they call them, you know, ancient stereo and all those. <laughs> they will play it, and the child will play and pause. And the guy will play the same thing on the keyboard. Maximum will make mistake once, but then he will start playing. And then they realize, Evan sent this one to compose classical music. It's one of the best in the world, and it's handicap. An angel just showed up. Now, you might not see an angel. And he said to Gideon, you know what? Look at what Gideon was doing. He was hiding from the Midianites what he carried. He carried some wine and he was hiding. But the angel said, others think you are coward, you are coward and you are hiding. What I see is strength. He said, you know what? Our salutation to you is that, mighty man, how are you doing? And he was wondering, you know why? Never define yourself or anybody by what you see on the external. A man is defined by what is going on inside him. Because the future is inside. You might see a guy walking around the road now. If the matters of his heart are strong and correct, by the time you all open your eyes again in five years' time, it's ahead of everybody. So outside, they saw a timid Gideon, last born. But the angel looked beyond to see the script in his heart. And he said, oh, mighty man. But then Gideon said that if, and then he said, go in this diamond and save Israel. In other words, the angel never said, we are going to empower you to save Israel. From eternity, your heart reads that here is a man with ability to save Israel. All this while, the matters of the art of Gideon is that Israel must be saved. And the angel said that we have seen it. Now I have come to interpret to you the fact that you are the man and the matters of the art, they are real. Go save Israel. And the angel and Gideon was like, oh. And the angel said, no, you are even going to save, smite them as one man. Let me show you something else and then Maybe we'll begin to pray. I will continue second service. Thank you, Jesus. Be glorified in the heaven. Be glorified. 
in the heart. Can you play that for me? Be glorified in the temple. Jesus. Be thou glorified. For Samuel chapter 9. You have made me a sanctuary. Pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I am a living, I am a living, sent you for you, Jesus, for you. I know many people wanted to sing it like, Lord, prepare me. The Bible already says you are the temple of God. It's not going to prepare you to be a sanctuary. You are already a sanctuary. The Holy Ghost dwells in you. All you should say is you have made me a sanctuary. With thanksgiving, I'm a living sanctuary. Once you are born again, you have become God's sanctuary. All right? Believers love to sing, asking God to do what he has already done. Let's go to around verse 17. Is it 17 or 13 now? Let's go down. 4 Samuel 9. Okay. When Samuel saw Saul, you know the beginning of the story, he went to look for his father's asses. The Lord said to him, Behold, the man whom I spake of, the same shall reign over my people. I think verse 19. And Samuel answered Saul and said, I am the seer. They were looking for seer. That's uh, like a prophet or yeah, a seer. Seer can see. Go up before me to high place. I shall eat with, you shall eat with me today. And tomorrow, I will let thee go. And I will tell you, everybody together, help me read the last word. I will tell you what? Say it again. This is where I want to start second service from. What were they looking for that made them to get to Samuel? Asses, they were lost. His father's donkey got missing and he was looking for it. After three days of searching or two, the servant said to Saul, Ah, Saul said to Samuel, Let's go back home. The father will start looking for us. Donkey don't lose. Now he'll be looking for us. And the servant said, Sir, this city we are, it's like looking for something. You are walking, walking, walking from Ikeja to VI. And then imagine your P or your friend telling you that, Ah, before we go, we're in VI. They said there is a man here. He sees into the spirit. We're already here now. Why not just go to his house and ask him about what we are looking for? And Saul said, Ah, I don't have money here. Saul was a well trained person. He said, You don't go to see a prophet empty handed. But because the journey was ordained by God, a slave, the servant said, But sir, I have money. He said, Hey, okay, let's go. Because God had destined that they must meet Samuel. They go to the city. It's like going to see the boy and asking the camp. Sorry, where, where, where is at the geo's office? And then they saw Samuel. They could not, you know, there were no pictures in those days. No video. So Israel had 12 tribes. Like in the ancient or your empire. You might not see your, a king your entire life. There, are, there were no pictures to put on the wall to know how your king will look like. In the or your empire, only the seven or your mercy could see the king. Maybe the old town might see the king once in a year. Maybe one annual festival. Boy, he will wear a crown with like beads that will cover his face. So you couldn't tell how your king looked like dark or white. You must not see king in those days. So you might live 80 years not to be able to tell whether your king is short or tall, dark or white. So the same, the same was like the Jew was the prophet. But many people in Israel never had the opportunity of seeing him. They just knew the name. He would just give a decree and all Israel would go by the decree. So Saul and his servant saw Samuel. He was going, ah, it's good to be humble, just going up calmly. And they said, excuse me, sir. Do you know this here? Where is he? How does it look like? And Samuel paused. And he said, I am this here. Can you imagine? I'm sure they would have been so afraid. This is the Samuel we are hearing about. He said, yes, I am Samuel. And he said, God had told me about you that you will come today. Then he said, that, but we are going to do something. He said, they are waiting for me, the old town. 
they will do sacrifice and then I will go to the high table and I will eat and bless the sacrifice. He says, you are going to be at the high table with me. What a promotion overnight. Then he said, you know what? I'm going to tell you what is in your heart. Look at the next verse. Thank you. Let's close with this. Is someone blessed this morning? Just wherever you are at home or any time, just follow the second service. As for the asses, they were lost. Now, this is the next one. He said, three days ago, set not your heart on them, for they are found. God just used those donkeys as decoy to get them out, as bait, to get them out. He said, you know what? You have met me. The asses are already at home because you are the one we are looking for. So in order, what I want to get out of this verse 20 is that the asses missing or no missing, that was not the issue in Saul's heart. That was the errand his father sent him. But that was not the issue. So look at what Samuel said. He said, I will tell you what is in your heart tomorrow. He said, tomorrow, tomorrow when I, I said, I'm going to keep you one day. When I'm about to release you, I will tell you what is in your heart. But let's of all deal with the issue of your father. He said, the asses you are looking for, they are found. He said, but tomorrow I'm going to tell you what is in your heart. In other words, two events are going on in your life. Your father sent you to look for asses. Beyond what you are looking for, there is what your heart is saying. Look at those who are watching me this morning, striving to work in Shell, in Chevron. I want to open a shop. I want to go to Canada. I want to go to London. I want to go to... Those are the things your mind is saying. What is your heart saying? The subject of the heart is always direct. There might be somebody watching me now. It is in your heart that you are going to be the governor of your state pretty soon. Every day you are bombarded with house rent. Um, uh, they, are, they did promotion in the office. That all those things are just events of life. They are not necessarily your heart. You know what I'm going to tell you as I close? I have discovered as a personality. Anytime, either by accident or intentionally, anytime you are praying and your mouth mentions what God puts in your heart, not the things your mind they are disturbing you about, Everyone responds so quickly. In the mind of Anna, I want to have a child to show Penina. In the heart of Anna, you are the woman to give God the next priest. Samuel we just read about. As she was praying, she mistakenly said, if you give me a son, I will give him to you. Everyone said, now you know they talk. I have discovered that prayers take long because many times what we are praying about they have nothing or little thing to do with actually what God has coded in here. How do I bypass my mind to get to my heart? Second service, shall we rise? Is someone blessed this morning? <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. As I see you here, can I have an anchor, please? I see great people here. I see mighty people here. Thank you. I see blessed people here. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The remaining days of the year, they will not be ordinary days unto you. You are going to have a revelation about your family, about your job, about your finances, about your husband or your wife. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord himself will guide you. He will lead you. For the rest of this year, you will not cry. You will not weep. You will not sorrow. The blessings of the Lord rest on you. Oh, thank you. you lift up your hands and begin to give God praise. When it comes to this, sometimes I just ask people to pray the language of the Holy Spirit. Or just take a song and begin to worship God wherever you are right now. 
when we talk about something, there is also anointing for it in the atmosphere. I believe that in this October, so many things will be revealed to so many people. Then it will look as if your speed has been multiplied 100 times over. Life is no longer slow nor boring. Then your marriage makes sense. Then your job makes sense. Then you begin to understand the reason why you are here on earth. Worship your maker or pray in the language of the Holy Spirit. I told you one time what the Lord said to me, when you pray or you worship, do it passionately. If you are blessing the name of the Lord, do it from your heart. Make it loud and clear. Don't praise God casually. And if you are praying in tongues, don't pray casually. Because right now at this service, a communication can come from God to you, from the Spirit of God to you. Let's take the next five minutes to do that. Either you are worshiping or praying. Everybody, you must be doing one of the two and do it all attentively. Hallelujah. Let it be. In the name of Jesus, that the month of October for you be greater than all the previous months. Your eyes shall see the glory of God. You will experience the goodness of God like never before. Is someone blessed this morning? Give God praise. I want to say, we move to another dimension of Bible's first service and second service next week. You've heard me say this before. I am not a sentiment. Hello, thank you for watching us. We don't want this to end without giving you an opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. You know, um, after listening to God's word like this and you have never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, it's an opportunity to come to him and it's a simple process because he has made all things available. I want to employ you now to give your heart to Christ. And by saying these words, because giving your heart to Christ must be done consciously. He has paid the price. Say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I believe that you died for me and that you rose again. I believe that you shed your blood for my justification. I accept your finished work right now and I confess that you are the Lord of my life. I believe in you. Thank you, Jesus. If you have said those words, you are actually born again, a new creation in Christ. Join us for more of this. God bless you.